Welcome to Paper Tuesdays with Michael Dwyer and Mark Halpin. Uh, Michael, how are you getting on today? Fantastic, and it's a great pleasure to have a honey badger with us. And it is Finally. the one and only Mickey Burke, the honey badger, all the way from Longwood in County Meath. How are you, Mickey? I'm good, lads. It's a pleasure to be talking to you as well. Not a bother me. I'm great, thank God. Deadly, deadly. The honey badger mentality. Give us, tell us, uh, Mickey, your your story is... A brilliant one you know it shows how you know if you apply yourself to anything you will reap the rewards from it in developing a personal de- discipline you're how many years have you been playing with me since you were 18 yeah yeah uh, since all four um i made my debut so i'm there a long time Um something i love something i enjoy lads so i'll keep going as long as i'm kind of contributing and wanted i suppose I think so. I think that I wouldn't be surprised if you get a call back in after all these videos. I tell you, the, tell us about the weightlifting and even just maybe you, you mentioned, maybe you didn't mention, but I think it's a good form of accountability, this type of weightlifting that you're posting on Instagram. It shows that the daily progress that you're making in it. Yeah, well, it's, look, I just said that I I put it up for social media uh, during the lockdown a little bit. Uh, the gym was always something that I was interested in. I, I completely get that it's not for everyone and not everyone is into it and, and some lads hate it. But for me, firstly, it was injury prevention and just getting physically bigger and stronger for sport. And um, I, I enjoy lifting weights and I enjoy going to the gym and reading up about different guys, what they lift, what the Leinster rugby guys are lifting, the Irish rugby guys, powerlifters. And uh, yeah, I suppose I have a kind of, and I've said this before in podcasts, I, I kind of probably maybe have a natural strength as well. You know, we all have our own little things. Like I've said before, some guys are really quick. Some lads have great endurance. I seem to have a good natural strength and I enjoy, I enjoy lifting weights in the gym. Mark, you recognize that, uh, you know, the, how every person could have a different skill set in that regard as well. Sure, being a personal trainer and mm. you've spoken before about how, um, you know, some people may be more inclined uh, towards um, athletic rather than some might be better at the weightlifting. Yeah, well, it came even on your own training, like you weren't, you were, you played J, but it was never your thing. You never really took to it, the sort of the yeah. intensity and stuff didn't suit you. But there, a couple of weeks ago, you started taking up endurance training and you're doing doing a triathlon. Yeah. You loved it. So it's, it's just about finding your niche as well. And like, luckily, with Mickey, he found it early, his strength, like, and I think when you find what you love, you get better at it as well. So like, you may have had the natural strength in the first place, Mickey, but I'm sure when you went to the gym and realized you were good at it, it was falling in love with it then, with what you were good at. And it's sort of double down on it then. Oh, definitely. Yeah, 100%. And look, I probably made mistakes. I probably forgot about the running and the speed work uh, maybe about 10 years ago I got probably too big and maybe lost a little bit of my mobility for cornerback so um, it's just getting that balance isn't it between getting your skills fairly good playing football and hurling getting your running fairly good and getting your it's a balancing act between all those little things Mm -hmm. I probably went a bit AWOL about 10 years ago and nearly turned into a kind of bodybuilder almost so it's just about getting that balance between between all of them I think you left out a very important fact, though, in that when you went way wall, you had you had broken your leg. You know, it was it was uh, you bouncing back and and fighting back and overcoming that injury. Um, that was that a milestone in your playing career. Yeah, like the leg break was horrendous, to be honest. Um, and again, the reason what I said what I was going to do was I was going to pump the weights out of it, give myself the best opportunity to rebuild myself and be unbreakable really that's kind of you know what I what I said I was going to do so um, probably got a bit too big but it was with the right idea in mind that I kind of again for sport it wasn't people might say he's doing it for aesthetics I'd be lying if I, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't I think we all have a little bit of we all like to look good and, and have a bit of muscle like come on like the, let's be honest about it mm. but genuinely it is so I don't break down in games and don't pop me hamstrings and things like that. Maybe I'm not running running fast enough to pop me hamstrings. Some would say, but yeah, that's the, that's and I, I just have a passion for it. And I, I like I'm constantly looking at power lifters and things like that. And you get stronger as you get older. They say it's it's an old man's game. So see what happens in a few years, maybe you know. Yeah, and it stood to you the weightlifting as well because the, like weightlifting over a long period of time, actually, some people have had the misconception in the past that you know it can get injury, it can cause injuries, lead to hamstring injuries, and you know broken bones and things like that. But it's actually the opposite. 
it, it strengthens yeah. the bones, it causes the bones to get bigger and stronger. And like, case in point, like, like he's been lifting weights till this age and he's still going strong. Like, mm. whereas opposed to lads who would be out running the roads all day, look at them, where are they now, do you know? Hip yeah, and I, I'm constantly trying to, trying to get my parents to, you know, simple things like just getting up off the seats without using their hands and their knees. Mm. Um, you know, a little like they're 80 years of age. Um, just general mobility, general strength. Um, and again, 100 meter sprinters, I know they don't have to play 70 minutes in a game, but they're ripped to shreds and they're carrying so much muscle. But yet, the oldest thing in the book is to say the weight slow you down. Like that is just, that's nuts, you know, mm. to come out with that. So, yeah, I keep going for, I keep at it for as long as I can. I feel it's benefited me throughout my career. I've no doubt about that. I said that. I'm not saying it's right for everyone, but yeah. it was right for me. It was right for me, you know? Yeah. yeah. And say as a personality, Mickey, I know you mentioned before how, you know, that childhood example of how you'd always bring fruit to school and that. But um, as a general personality, you, you, I know the per- parental influence is a big thing, but you're always trying to get an edge. And even if it's like you you hopped into the ice bath there, the Wim Hof uh, technique there, you, you put us to shame there. We've been doing cold showering lately, but I tell you, we haven't braved the ice bath just yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose I've always looked for a bit of an advantage, boys and Anathan. Um, yeah, the fruit in school, like I, I, no one told me to start doing that I, I I just used to drink water and no no one kind of gave me the difference between right or wrong but I just knew that eating a chipper every day the boys would be going down eating chips at lunch and big bags of sweets I just knew I don't know what did my parents have and like I always got good food at home would have had you know my meal cooked for me ma like when she came home she was the primary school teacher taught me you know you'd have good food on the table so um I just I I probably got them traits from a young age just to try and eat fairly healthy healthily and um, that's what, how I kept that going uh, in school uh, don't get me wrong geez I would have had a bag of chips here and there I wasn't a complete monk but I, I, I tried to get any advantage I could and, and same to this day whether it's compression gear or um, recovery pants or tights or ice baths just I, I want to I want to be able to look back and say that you know I gave it everything I could as long as I could and kind of have no regrets yeah that that's the way I'd be thinking lads anyway you know I I, I look at some of these guys when they kind of go to 40 or 45 and they, they take up running all of a sudden and, and and fair play that's that's brilliant but and I have, I have great respect for them I'm not putting them down at all but I'm kind of saying you know your peak is you know your teens to your mid 30s or early you know like and, and I want to just give it everything I can then yeah yeah it's fortunate then that since you have that um, aim you, and um, focus that it comes from a lot of routine and discipline and you like the routine the discipline of senior football but like um, you, you kind of have to have a discipline when it comes to your regular training as well don't you? Ah oh, you do yeah Jez you do like and uh, God I, I probably took it to the extreme well I did take it to the extreme at times different things like um you know, I was so strict to myself and ha- and I probably didn't have to be, you know, Jays, like I wouldn't eat a jelly bean or a, or a, or a wine gum for, for weeks or like I was so strict to myself, think of packing and you're going, Jays, what would a packet of wine gums really have done to you? Do you know what I mean? But then I say to myself, would I have got where I got without that kind of thing? Like I got a black card against Kildare uh, a couple of years ago and uh, early on after about 10 minutes, first round of the league, and I felt so guilty after. I, I fucking felt so... Jeez, I probably shouldn't have cursed there, lad. Sorry. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I, felt, I, felt, I felt so guilty. Um, mm. You know, I, I remember staying in my gear and coming home and absolutely flogging myself on the pitch uh, in Longwood because I felt that I hadn't got that hit out on the pitch. You know, I was just an extremist. Mm. I always was an extremist. If you told me to eat spinach and chicken for three months in a row you know that's what I would do I would do that to the letter of the law yeah some guy some guys go the other way but that was just my makeup for whatever reason yeah that's fascinating that's a, it's not something that you hear many people talk about like the shame or the the guilt as you said sorry of of um like getting a card in a game yeah, I, 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 the minute I got sent off it was after about ten minutes. I shouldn't have been sent off, but or or got the black card. But mm. um, yeah, I just sat in my gear and I said to myself, 
jeez, I, I, I haven't hardly sweated here at all. Like, you know, and then I went home and I did runs in the field and I absolutely blasted myself out of that. Whereas I'm sure other lads just would have had a shower, had the yeah. food after the game and went, and went home. But I couldn't do that. I, I wouldn't have felt right. Yeah. You know, um, I've, I've so many examples of, of things like that down through the years where I had to go to the gym at 11 o'clock at night. I had to do that session. Whereas maybe I could have done it the next day, but I just, if I was given the program to do, you know, on a specific, like I went up to the field today and did runs today. Yeah. It was concrete and all day there. And I wanted to get it in before, before chatting to you guys, you know, because yeah. I knew that if seven o'clock came, it'd be dark. So look, it's just, it's just the way I am. And it's, I, I don't make any secret of it. I enjoy it. Yeah. I hope I'm not waffling on a bit, bit there. No, now you're not. This is but, um, And like, say that's, that's your viewpoint, Mickey, but like, um, you were involved with the meet twenty footballers this year. So, like, how as a manager, as a selector, or in, involved in the management setup, how do you instill that in a player? Do you know just follow the program or d- just live it and breathe it? Like, because not every player would be would be that way inclined. Yeah, like I, I, I didn't have much involvement now at all. To be honest, I was oh, just chatting. Know. I wasn't really involved yet. No, no, I was just chatting here and there to different guys. Look at I. I I, I suppose it's a different generation, boys, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's even changed. It's changing all the time. Um, there's more things to do. Maybe maybe people have more in different interests. I just wanted to play hurling and football. Maybe that was small-minded. Um, like, people ask me about young fellas now, 20, 21, uh, ages of 20, 21 with Mead, you know, and they're seeing they're playing Dublin down the line in the summertime. Um, they're saying, why am I going to train five or six nights a week to, you know, get bet by Dublin maybe in an Leinster yeah. semi-final? I that never came into my head. I, I always just wanted to compete, and maybe stupidly, but young lads might maybe have a bit more brains than I did, and they said to themselves, "Yes, I'm not going to put myself through that for six months to get bet." But I, I always wanted to compete and test myself against them lads, and um, yeah. Yeah, but you see the value in like even say if it be at the county thing. I know you had success in twenty ten, but like I think a lot of your focus is Longwood. You know, it's community. It's it's where you're from. It's your pride of place, and especially with having the pub there. So for for you, it's it's more local and it's uh, more grounded in that that uh, community aspect. Yeah, I have a great community here in Longwood. Um, like I've said, like my father's the publican. My mother's a teacher. Uh, they're up, they've obviously retired now. Um, and they instilled huge love of Longwood. I'm I'm in the middle of the street here, middle of the village, and you know, people people knew me from a young age anyway, because I was Stony Burke's son. My father's nickname is Stony, you know, the pub is called Stoney's. So um, and my dad was the, is the only man to have ever played minor and senior championship football for me on the one day. Wow. So I there's yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's not too many boys that would have ever done it in different counties, you know. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. Um, was he Paddy in Mike badminton? Reared. Well, did you say? Or you know, I saw the story there recently. Was he? Did he play badminton? Oh yeah, badminton is huge here in Longwood. Like, oh is it? We, bad, oh yeah, badminton is one of the biggest club. Uh, we've, we, I think we've the biggest club in Mead. No way. Even though we're a village, yeah, yeah. Oh, like that was my mother's sport. Like I would have played up until about under nineteen. Would have played for Leinster under seventeen, under nineteen. I was. I was I was pretty good at badminton now. Um, great for your feet. Would have would have travelled up to Dublin at weekends a lot. Great sport. Very it's very very one. good. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, it's a quick one. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cheers. We great teams here along with. But Dad still plays. He won in, he won in All Ireland and and um, rep- represented Ireland in the World Championships over seventies. Yeah, he's a class wow. man. But over seventies, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he played. He played in goals. He played in goals for the minors, and then he played in goals for the seniors after straight away after. And he's the only mead man to have ever done that. So wow. uh, he would have been. He would have given me a huge love of football and mead, and you know that old mead spirit and doggedness and hardness and um. Yeah, Longwood is a great little spot. You guys are more than welcome, boys. Whenever you, I did. Whenever, I when, 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 that offer, yeah. <laughs> when, when, whenever, whenever things settle down a bit, please. God. <laughs> um. That that picture that you painted your father there that makes a lot more well not that it makes a lot more sense but it makes even more vivid that memory of when you first made the county team and getting the letter and the embrace of the father that that's a special memory for you anyway. 
Oh yeah, he 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 he's not a cocky man at all. He's quite a rough diamond, like really, you know. And he would have uh, he wouldn't have been very lovey. He wouldn't have been, you know, we wouldn't have been hugging and kissing each other, like I said. But uh, he would have said here and there, I only played, I, or I'm the only man to have played minor or senior for me. Then the one day he would have said that very 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 occasionally. And I didn't really appreciate it. when you're 14, 15, you didn't really understand that. What's he on about? Mm-hmm. But when you look back now, you go, Jesus, that's like it's never going to be done again. Because yeah. the minors obviously changed grade and you can't play a senior. So, um, yeah, he would have went to every game I ever went to, but have brought me everywhere. So, a great man, a great a great man. Now he's 80 shortly, so. Um, and still out farming and yeah. pulling and dragging, pulling and dragging sheep, so. <laughs> he gave me that bit of he gave me he, he gave me that bit of uh, toughness and straight you know like no sympathy jizz if you come in with a cut in your finger after a hurling game or after or or, 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 a, or a sore hamstring he'd be looking at you going jizz there was no hamstrings in our day lad what are you on about <laughs> so, you know so but but I think that breeds a bit of a bit of hardness into you you know like if you're if you're yeah. constantly and I, I think there should be a bit of it as well. You know, kids nowadays tell them they're good and, and, and everything and, and you know, are you okay? And Jay's be constantly talking about it. I, I do think that you can soften young lads and young ones up way too easy uh, by pampering them. Like, yeah, definitely, yeah. Medals You've for a 17th place and fucking jokes like that. Achieve <laughs> participation awards. <laughs> yeah. How was that? I had a medal day, medals for a 17th place in the race at the field day and jokes like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that, it, you know, it's not all about winning, but I think, you know, well done. I remember reading Alex Ferguson's book and he said the two best words for a coach in the English dictionary is well done. But if you're constantly telling a kid well done for just running or something or or solo on the ball or bouncing it, you know, well done. Well, like that wears off. Whereas if you give a well done once in a blue moon, you know, you'll really appreciate it. And, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, if you remember heard the strength coach of Charles Poliquin. He reckons you should always reward work, never reward the person for just being themselves because otherwise they won't work. Oh, so should always say Charles Poliquin. Yeah, yeah, savage, isn't he? Very good, very good. I like that one. Yeah, it's like the postman, isn't it? Roy Keynes. You don't praise happen. the postman for like doing his job. He <laughs> delivers the letters, like you know. <laughs> yeah. So Charles Poliquin. Yeah, look that one up now. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's all about breeding resilience, I suppose. That, that that's your focus, and that's the reason why you're you're saying, you know, that you know we shouldn't really promote uh, children too much. Um, how yeah. how do you think you breed you over your county career? You've brought resilience to it, you know, to make sure that you bounce back every time. So, well, I suppose the Aussie Rules is a fine example when you or was it the Aussie Rules or the county team where the two other fellas made it and you uh, you got yeah the, the Aussie Rules, yeah, yeah. The Aussie, the Aussie rules, yeah, 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 yeah. Got, 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 made the first two trials and then got dropped the last one after winning the three, the three lap uh, run. Uh, anyway, but uh, we had a three lap run at the start, and I remember, I remember winning it. But the other boys made it. Queevin, Queevin King actually made the Aussie rules team. He would have played for me for a good few years. Queevin, wing back to 2010, but um, yeah, under 17. So again, if I didn't have these little. I think you're very special if you go through your career and you just, you know, you constantly are going on an upward curve or you're, you're, you're nothing ever happens. You win championships on the 14, 15, 16 minor senior or 21 senior. If you do that, geez, you've had some career like, and that certainly didn't happen to me. Um, and again, just back to the kids thing, you know, it's a very, people could look at, look at me and go, what's he on it? Like, you've got to be very careful nowadays with kids, don't you? And, and saying the wrong things, but I just, geez, I'm all for praising, you know, mm. Mullinoy, because Chucky, she praised the youth and they will prosper. But I just think that God, sometimes it can be too much. And, and we, we kind of have to, you know, that I think, I think we're, I, I've talked to primary school teachers about this. My mates are primary school teachers and just resilience is kind of gone. Mm. You know, if, if a kid doesn't do well at, in a, in a sport or loses a boxing match or, um, loses the game they just say no I don't want to play that anymore I don't I don't want to I go to a different sport or I'll try something else yeah Um. you know like like we all lose Jeez, if you go through your career and you don't you don't you, you, you win everything fair play like yeah 
you don't have to mull it over anymore either. Like as soon as you get back in the car after losing the match or a box of matches, a chapter straight on your phone, you forget about the distraction immediately. It's like, oh, well, yeah. What about wow. that? What about it? Like, That's so you don't you don't feel it. You don't feel the loss as intensely. Whereas, like when say like we were younger, or whatever. I know you'd get in the match. You'd have to the whole drive home to think about what you don't yeah. know. You know, yeah, you'd be bullying. You'd be bu- you, you, Yeah, exactly. You'd be giving out to you, or you'd be you'd be bullying with temper, or you'd and then you'd go out and you'd kick a ball against the wall, poke a ball against the wall. You'd be out being active, and and I I don't know. It's it, it's it's just a tricky one. Kids now go in, they're on their phone, maybe to watch telly, and and it's just yeah, God, it's a, it's a tough one. But yeah, resilience. I I don't know. I just had it in me, and always wanted to like push harder and get better, and wasn't the best at anything but I certainly had a good mentality um for the, for for sport yeah um now that you now that you're older and like say that you're constantly looking for examples looking for as you said before marginal gain so like when you when you look for role models you look to the all blacks and Kilkenny but are there, are there any other sporting icons that you say do you know what what they're doing is right Ah yeah, like I, I look, I looked at the All Blacks, Richie McCaw, Brad Thorne when he came to to Leinster. Um, I'm a huge rugby league fan. Um, Cameron Smith is is a guy who's played over 400 games in the NRL with Melbourne, Melbourne Storm. I actually only got his book. I just I like Peter Stringer, Dunnick O'Callaghan. Um, I've read all their books. Um, Kilkenny were yeah, I, I I was a huge Kilkenny fan, and and I still have a good bit of a graph for Kilkenny. I must admit. Sorry, lads. Um, oh, although I did like I, I I did like I did like Wexford as well. I Liam Dunn, I just I used to love Liam Dunn, but um, yeah, I, I just try and pick the brains out of all them guys. If Ryan Giggs had a book, I, I I'd read it. Um, so yeah, I, I siphle through books. I I, I sport and autobiographies. Like I only got I only got Cameron Smith here the other day from Australia. Like he's 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 he's, he's the record. NRL games, he's the record goals, he's the record points, he's the most tests for Australia. It's rugby league, but I might get something out of him. Yeah. I know rugby league, rugby league isn't for everyone, so I just I read books and see what the best players are doing and try and learn from the best. I suppose. Get the age, yeah. When did you kind of when did you start reading like sports books and this? Or have you always been one to pick up a book and dip into it, dive into it? it? Yeah, I would have always been a reader mainly sport I'd like to get better at other things but like my house is full of autobiographies here like I've got probably three or four in the, in the lockdown um, so Ma, Ma would have always tried to being a teacher would have tried to have, drive into reading and I probably went through a bad phase there just being constantly on my phone at night but now I try to do 20 minutes or leave the phone down at whatever half 11 and, and do a half an hour reading Brilliant. Um, to try, try and shut off and get a good night's sleep so yeah um, read Sean O'Brien's book there as well, recently as well so if Sean is watching this it was very good I enjoyed it <laughs> yeah yeah, you're a big reader too Mark yeah yeah I, I wouldn't be much into the autobiographies now really yeah but, yeah, but uh, yeah. There's definitely, it's definitely success leaves clues and you know if you want to find out about something read someone who's wrote a book on it because whatever they've wrote it took them 20 years 30 years to find out and you can get what they learned from reading it in fucking three weeks a month or whatever you read the book in yeah, but, uh, definitely, definitely learn off, learn off the best, like you know. So he's uh, we follow each other on Instagram. So he might, he might uh, when I put up this link, he might, he might see it. So uh-huh. Sean, your book was very good, top uh-huh. man. <laughs> we'll tag him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the resilience, Mickey, is that why you're lifting weights in the snow? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that was probably just having a bit of crack. Now, to be honest, I'm not going to not going to lie about that. That was just trying to be something different. So. Um, you're always yeah, was, you're always thinking of what can I do different here whether it's lifting kegs moving kegs or sure one of your original videos was just chopping a piece of wood you know it's just out in the outdoors and being a man doing man stuff isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it I, and again just having a laugh like I, yeah. so, some people aren't into the gym and Look, if 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 people think I'm an I'm an idiot, that's fair enough. You know, they don't have they don't have to follow me. I don't really, I honestly don't really care. So yeah. I just try. I don't take myself too seriously. Try and have a bit of crack. Try and it, it is tough. Like tr- throwing the kegs in was tough enough. I was pumping sweat, but yeah. um, like the bull hay is monster. I always remember them saying he hated the gym. He loved farming though. 
So the the Munster S and C used to have them out flipping tires, you know, the big uh, tractor tires and hitting them with a sledge and and uh, chopping timber and that's why that's how he got his gym session in the bull. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, they made it they made it uh, cool for him. So I just try and do some, something a bit something a bit different, really. That's all. Yeah. I tell you, there's a book in you just cataloging those experiences. Uh, what did you? Yes, I don't know. <laughs> Have you often done ice baths, or you know, well, you probably didn't do one in the in the blue tub that you did most of the day, anyway. No, bath. I didn't. I, uh, I that that that's just a rainwater catcher, and it was frozen over. And I I said I'd use up the I'd use it for the crack, and uh, but I, I probably will do it. When, when you're stuck in COVID, you you come yeah. up with all these crazy ideas and primal things, so. No, I'd be a big believer in the ice baths as well. Um, scientifically, they're not actually really proven, but placebo, if it gives you a bit of a mental hit, yeah. um, that's as much as anything. So I would have, if they were there after games, I would have always uh, hopped into them. I think they're I think they're very good. A lot of rugby league teams even used them before games. Right. St. Ha- St. Helens in England, yeah, you know, the the proper cryo, cryo yeah. ones like the... the um, they, they they use them before games for fifteen minutes. So, yeah, I'd be, I'm again. I'm all for trying anything. Why not? Yeah. Um, Are you a fan of them? Oh, I haven't. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we always sell cryo. All right. Oh, right. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we do the cold showers every day. Two of us. We started oh, yeah. about a month ago, and we still have a WhatsApp group to do cold showers every day till the twenty seventh of March. I think it was three months or something was the limit we were going to do but yeah we're sticking to it and we do five minutes every morning we just do that savage for the day so do you do do you have hot and then do you have cold or do you just go cold straight cold yeah I think straight cold yeah straight cold five minutes we do that Wim Hof breeding first as well now Uh, we didn't start that way but it sort of seeped in and it actually helps with the cold once if you do it before you get in you sort of heat up a lot quicker. And well, the weirdest thing I noticed was uh, before I started doing the Wim Hof, I do the five minutes cold shower and then I'd have to hop into a warm shower to warm myself back up. When I started doing mm. the Wim Hof beforehand, I'm warm as soon as I get out of the cold shower. I don't wow. need to heat Savage. myself up. Yeah, That's it's unreal. a mad line. I don't know why, but yeah, yeah, there's something to it. That's great. That's great. I Fair play to you, for doing that. Oh, look, it's great. It breeds discipline, and that's that's the best thing. Um, I suppose when you think of Wim Hof and alternative ones, like uh, isn't uh, Sean Boyle interested in? Um, he does herbal remedies and stuff like that. Uh, you had the great experience of uh, being coached under Sean in your first year. Um, did he have a like? Was it, it must have been great to know that you know that Sean Boyle was the man that gave you your first county call up, like for for adult. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant when people ask that. Like, I feel very privileged that I did have a year under him. Um, I wish I was a little bit older, and I, I, I could, you know, appreciate it more in a way. But um, his last year was my first year, so Asher Sean's legendary status in the country. Never mind Mead. The only Mead free man of Mead. Um, four All Irelands, and and you're walking into a dressing room with 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 some of the best players of all time one, and one of the greatest managers of all time. So I was, I was starry eyed and yeah, Sean is again, he's, he's very alternative. He's a uh, man into flexibility and herbal drinks. And we used to drink them every night. He didn't know what was in them. Now they were absolutely, they were stinking off like, but you got them into yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, you powered them in. So um, they were all kind of greens and herbal, herbal uh, remedies. So, you didn't ask any questions. Well, I certainly didn't. I just powered them in. He <laughs> was the right one for coming up with different drills. Though. You mentioned before how, was it a water-based one he had you do in... Yeah. Um, like, that That was going on for years. He, like, you, it was nuts when you think about it. So, he started that in 91. Like, Mead, do you remember the, the four games at Dublin and... Like me, me played. It was 12, 12 or thirteen games before me got to the All Ireland final that year in ninety one. But that was an aging team in ninety one. Uh, you'd have, would have had a lot of boys with a lot of miles in the clock: Colin O'Rourke, Mick Lyons, Jerry McIntyre. And for basically the three months before the championship, pretty much the boys were in the pool with a with a um, uh, uh, what do you call it around their waist? Fucking hell, uh, a float around their waist to keep them up. So you put that around and the pool was about 12 foot deep and Sean would stand on the outside of the pool and he'd blow the whistle and the lads would mimic a run in the pool. So you couldn't, you couldn't touch the edges 
and you're pumping them legs as hard as you could for maybe 15 seconds, Sean, to blow the whistle, 15 seconds off, 15 seconds on again. And it was t- like, we, we, we were doing that in 04. So, but like back in 1991, yeah, like the, the word got out and that the Mead boys had lost the marbles, that Sean had lost the plot, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, they hadn't been out in the pitch, I think three weeks or two weeks before the first round is when Mead stepped out in the field. So right. um, he learned it off an Olympic, uh, sp- Olympic sprinter, I think, that was injured oh, back then. Right. And that's how she did her training. So Sean mimicked it. And yeah, and that was going on for years. You used to go up to Garmistown and you couldn't touch the edges. So your rest, you were kind of floating around a little bit. You know what I mean? Just maybe go on your back or then he'd blow the whistle again and you'd have to go maybe for 20 seconds or 30 seconds. But geez, it sounds easy, but by God, it wasn't. Yeah. 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 And that's 1991. And now you see him doing the UFC. Things like that. Yeah. It obviously works. Yeah. Warming up, running up the steps in, in pitches that were frozen or, or too mucky that you couldn't do it, you know, like you'd have you jogging up and down the steps and you know, come down and then up the steps again and just different things. Like you just, he kind of one in a million is, is Sean, a really, really, really special man. Um, had the COVID actually, the poor, the poor devil, he got a wolf of bad uh, dose of it. So thank God he's okay because he's his hero, hero status throughout the country, never mind me. Yeah. Yeah, having the with your father and now you having the pub has it kind of made you? Um, you seem like anyone that you know is a decent person. You just you 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 know them inside out, and there's a great social aspect to the to, to the Irish country pub. And and like, is that a quality that you think you get from being reared in a pub, so to speak? As in that you can kind of you know like, if lads a bit like, of an. You've mentioned before how you uh, miss out, or you you know you're thinking that the lads down the road that would have normally not for even for the drink, but for for the connection, and wow. like just for you there beaming about Sean Boyle, you you've a great skill of uh, you know admiring people and seeing the best in people, and um, like surely when it comes to your own fellow community uh, people in the community that you your your heart goes out to the lads that can't get in for the social drink because of COVID now at the moment. Oh, big time, yeah, big time you would. And pub game is we've been hit hard with the whole thing. So, um, look, I could rant on about that for ages, you know. But um, I completely agree that we should be closed now at the moment with the way the cases have gone and the and the whole thing is uh, the new variant of the of the of the COVID. But um, there a few months ago it was a joke that we weren't allowed to open. It was really wrong. Like pubs are getting, we were getting slapped in the face, and but. Yeah, for for men and women who come in socially, some just have a coffee or a cup of tea and a chat, pack their crisps and a club orange. Um, you know, you're not going to be making millions of dollars in a, on a Monday or Tuesday in Longwood, but it, it's a social hub for people, and um, it's the only chance some people get out and, and get get to talk to people. So, I definitely miss that and miss the routine. And um, growing up in the pub was scary when you were young. It was it was. You know, I wasn't uh, uh, confident. Is not the right word, but uh, you know, you're walking behind the bar, and your father wants you to pull pints or wash glasses. A young fella, it's intimidating enough place, right? Ah, it is, yeah, because lads are full and yeah, ah, trying to have the cr- trying to have the crack with you. And you know, you don't know what a hangover is, or you don't know what a few pints are. And these boys might be on day two, and and they're they're full, and they're you know, All right. taking the t- taking the Mickey out of you a little bit, and you're you're shy, like you know. So it yeah. took me a long time to come out of that shell, and be be confident behind the bar, you know, right. uh, because my my father had such a presence, like he was the man, like you know, you think of, you think of of. I don't know, you probably know someone from Castletown and who's the first person you think from Castletown? Well, you think of Stony Burke from Longwood, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's always a character well, like I don't even know, but you know, shock strikes you. Shock yeah. Like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Know. Do you know, Club legends, local Club legends. legends is right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where are you from? Are you from Longwood? Oh, jeez, Stony Burke, the big lad with the moustache and the cowboy yeah, hat. That's it, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, he was, and, he, and he was behind the bar and you wouldn't mess with me out, lad. Like, you know, he was a, he was a tough, tough unit. So I was shy and I was, you know, I was in his, in his shadow and, and not that it was a competition, but it's an intimidating place, the bar. But I definitely got a good, I can spot a, a, a an eager from a mile away. Mm-hmm. You know, like I can, I can, someone once said to my mother that you're an MRI scanner for bullshit. You can, you can just, <laughs> you can just, my mother can just, she just knows, she just, she give her, give her a minute with you and she'll, she'll, you know, she'll read you like a book. 
<laughs> so um, I kind of got that off her, you know, I'll give everyone a chance and I'll, I'll try and be respectful to everyone. But um, yeah, it's a good trade to have if you, if you have that. Yeah, yeah. Um, last year, Mickey, were you, you were upskilling in PT and nutrition, is that right? Or yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm almost. I'm not. Not going to lie. I failed one of my exams in me in me nutrition, so I have to repeat it. Past three out of the four, uh, three out of the four of them. So I have to. Um, I have to do the fourth one again. Um, it's all new for me because I. I was. I was. I was lazy in school. I. I didn't. No interest in college. No. No. Rightly or wrongly, no motivation. And um, school was just an opportunity to play sport. And and went to DIT for two years and just played Sigerson and Fitzgibbon. Uh, wasting my parents' money going up and down in the bus. Um, so it was new to me studying and and it was it was tough. Like yeah, I don't you, you boys are probably in college, but I, I I wasn't really. So yeah, I'll be a qualified nutritionist when I get it done. And I love food and I love. I, I hope to help teams and athletes in the future because I've I've really good knowledge of it. It's just passing the fucking exams. That's the that's the key. Have that have that piece of paper, isn't that right? Well, you're doing so much. Like it's it's a uh, it's keeping a few things in the air. But uh, yeah, like you say, I've just um, I was in the backroom team of a county team there this year, and just to see the level of you know you you have to have the right meal for the right be it a training or be it three days before a game. You need to know what 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 is needed because it's not it's it, what's going to be right isn't going to be right the next day and that type of thing. Oh yeah, there's so there's so much to it, but it's it's very interesting and it's a young fella might want to put on size, another guy might want to shed a bit of timber, and some lad mightn't like that particular food or might be a celiac or um, again food was another way for me of trying to eat well constantly and get that get that advantage energy wise and recovery wise. So um, I've I have no doubt that that sport is eighty percent food and 20% training or, or 70% food and, and, and 30% training. You, you, you can't out-train a, ba- a bad diet um, as much as people might want to say that. But it doesn't mean you have to live like a monk and go off bread and eat no jellies or not have a bar of chocolate or any of this rubbish. But looking after your diet, if you're a young fella watching this um, and drinking plenty of water will certainly help you in, in the future in your in your sport. Yeah. You avoid dairy and gluten. Well, you you take little of it, but is that kind of just by choice or what? what? Yeah, I, I I probably fell a little bit into the the trap of of you know again dairy and gluten was really really bad for you um a few years ago and um I do I do I, I do have a glass of milk here and there and I do have gluten um. You know, but I I just don't eat massive amounts of it. And um, again, there's nothing really wrong with it. If you're a celiac, if you're a celiac, then or, or lactose intolerant, well then, not great for you. But obviously, but um, no, I I, I again, propaganda is amazing on social media and and you yeah. hear that thing all the time. Oh, gluten, gluten's bad for you. You can't have gluten. So, but when you get a bit older and you learn, you say, just like a few slices of homemade brown bread is actually probably better than uh, the gluten free stuff in the in super value. You know, yeah. yeah. Mark, you you're now qualified. PC. Sorry, lads, I'm probably I'm probably waffling on to you there now. But no, 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 I don't that the same. Uh, I taught myself into being gluten intolerant. So <laughs> right, I yeah, shit like, and then every oh jeez, I ate that. Now I feel bad, and then I decided <laughs> I wasn't gluten intolerant anymore, and then I was fine when I ate it. <laughs> See, this is it. This is fucking it. And you're hearing all these boys. Oh look, I'm gluten free, and I'm I I probably felt a little bit better because I wasn't taking on the extra calories. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like people yeah. say, I, I've, oh, I've lost a load of weight. Do you ever hear people saying that? I feel great. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not eating any gluten. All right. What are, you, what are you having? Well, I'm not eating the cake. I'm not eating the bread. I'm not eating the, the biscuits at night. All right. It was not really the gluten. It's the amount of food. You're after restricting all those calories. So you're bound to, do you know, it's not necessarily the gluten. They're just, they haven't had as many calories. Yeah. 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 And um, would you? Yeah, so would you? Much of what uh, Mickey said there about uh, you know eighty twenty uh, it being eighty percent food, twenty percent training. Do you see the same when you with your exercise or what? what ah, you yeah, it's your, it's your fuel source. It's it's not just like your sort of physical performance as well. It's your mental. Like if you're eating sort of 
shite the whole time, you're not you're gonna be you're a foggy brain. Like you're not going to sleep as well as say you're eating fresh whole foods and getting enough protein, and healthy fats, and things like that. And people think low fat is bad as well. Like or sorry, high fat mm. is bad. But you actually need fat. Like you, mm. you need certain amounts of it for your hormones and things like that. So it's about a varied diet. And as Mickey said, calories are probably the most important, more so than that. And it's like if you being in a calorie deficit or being in something around what you should be is the most important thing. And if you can just educate yourself on that, you're I was ahead of a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, like I would have had troubles with food. Like I would have had a, I would have had a kind of a food disorder as well, uh, because I was so obsessive about it and what I was putting into my mouth and weighing it and um, all those things. So I probably got, went down a bad road. I, I did have a food disorder. Did you? Um, yeah, I did. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when, called red syndrome. You? About two years ago. All right. What sort of syndrome? Yeah. Reds, it's called Reds right. syndrome. So it's if you Google it, it's it's kind of it's restriction of calories. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of women actually get it. They, they so I was I was trying to to, to trim down and, and lose muscle and not be as bulky, and I did it the complete wrong way. Like God, I cringe when I think of it. Like I was eating like a piece of chicken breast and salad all day like that's all I was eating and going to meet football training and training the house down and the training I was doing was crazy and my body actually almost held on to the the fat and and and, and my body and I actually puffed a little bit like people the general public wouldn't have seen that but I, I I did feel a little bit so that's what that's the that's the big mistake that everyone makes they they, they go on this mad crazy I'm eating nothing and they might do that for two weeks and stick to it and then they go AWOL just eat bread cake whatever food you know because they're so hungry and it just goes off the chart but yeah I was pretty much starving myself and training at a really enti- high intensity and I went to a few specialists about it yeah it was, it was and it was tough to get out of it it was and I, I still constantly think about food and yeah yeah so yeah no food disorder it's hard to explain to someone who hasn't had a food disorder you know it's 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 it's, it's a tricky subject yeah, mm. yeah, you're extremely candid and forthright. That's that, that's uh, to 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 talk like that about it, and then to also have like that's obviously why then you said, oh sure, I'll learn about this, I'll do this nutrition course. Like that, that's fierce, admirable. Yeah, my missus would have drove that on as well. In fairness to her, like she was brilliant, and Ma would have always said, like you you should do something because you're so knowledgeable about food. You should try and do it. So um, yeah, it's just it's just maybe an, ex- an experience that I have um, food disorders and, and even it came up and one it's a lecture on my, my course food disorders and I could really what's the word with it like I could resonate with it yeah. what was going on it's people think of food disorders as someone who can't who's really really heavy and can't stop eating yeah. do you know like that's the first thing they probably think of do you know the I was watching on the telly, what's that 6,000 pound man and he tries to get the fucking, do you know the gastric band? Do you know that joke? Mm. Out in America. <laughs> uh, but no, like there's so many different ones and mine was mine was actually starving myself and training the house down. Yeah. And uh, not, and I, the person I went to see, he actually said, uh, it's amazing how how you didn't get sick or injured. It's 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 amazing. Right. It's very common. Because my, my that, yeah, my immune system. Yeah. Did you hear about it before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I never yeah. really actually heard the name Reds before, but a lot of people do it. Nearly everyone goes on a crash diet and like they sort of go and try to train it away. Now they might not do it as intensely as you did, Mickey, but it is fairly common for someone to say they're overweight and go, right, I'm sick of being fat. I'm going to eat a thousand calories a day or I'm going to eat just fucking carrots yeah. for two weeks and I'm going to run 10 miles and then they get hurt or injured or sad or whatever and then they give up and then they put on twice as much weight as they were in the first place exactly exactly like I, I used to without boring is I'd have two coffees in the morning right I'd go and I might do 10k in the gym in the Marriott or, or, or 6k I'd get into the sauna I'd come home I'd maybe do a few jobs around the farm I'd have a chicken fillet it's fucking nuts when I think about it chicken fillet and salad and then I'd go meet football train Jeez. it was absolutely mental I was, I was in this cycle where I had to lose I had to lose weight I had to lose muscle I had to get more mobile even though I was in great nick right I was in, I was in good nick but I wanted to be better and I wanted to be lighter and even though lighter mightn't have necessarily meant I was going to be a better footballer but um, I just got into this rut and oh my god it was it was it was horrendous you know um, yeah so anyway 
Um, not too many people really know that, but uh, and I don't mind. I don't mind saying it. it's just not something that's come up in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. But sure, you found the answer now, like with the nutrition course. Yeah. So. I have, yeah, and um, I'm still finicky about food, and I go out and I'm, I'm awkward. Like I don't, I don't like sauce. I never like sauce or stuff like that. Anyway, but um, yeah, sure. Again, it's all a learning curve, lads, isn't it? You know, like I said, it's a lot ups and downs. And if I can help someone down the line in nutrition with a an eating disorder, you know, because it's happened to me. Definitely, yeah, yeah. But it all comes from a place where you're trying to be the best. You're you're trying to be the best person that you can be, and to, you know, for those around you, for those, for like, it, it all makes sense. Although it must have been a very difficult time to look back on it and think, Janie, that was foolish or whatever. Like, it 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 shows your mentality and how you you really. You, you love seeking marginal gains, be it as simple as the sleep. You give a great example with the Manchester United story of how uh, only a few valued the importance of sleep back then. Yeah, yeah, the sleep, yeah. What was it? Um, Ferguson called a meeting with your man, Nick Little Hills. He's, he's on Instagram, actually. He's the sleep coach. And he, uh, the whole team went. That was fine. And he called, then there was an, another meeting then maybe a week later and it wasn't, uh, not all the players had to attend, you, uh, attended at your own if you, if you wanted to go. So I think only three of them turned up uh, gigs, uh, Gary Neville and uh, Roy Keane. So, um, yeah, look, sleep, the Burks are great sleepers, you know, like it's, it's a known fact in long like the Burks are great men to sleep and, and my father's a great man to sleep. And so, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I like, I like, I like, I like me kip, lads. I like me kip. I'll, I'll nod away there during the day for an old nap if I get a chance as well. But um, yeah, yeah. So the more examples yeah. you give of this story, fella. I think I'd love to sit down and have a good chat with story. And I'd say he has a great view of the world. Oh, he is now. He's a, he's a he's a gas man. He's a gas <laughs> man. He's a he's good now. He's good as gold. So um, yeah. you know, no. He's a he's a good he's a good character. He's a great upbringing. Now I have to say. Yeah. Very grateful for the for the jizz like you would have, don't get me wrong, like I said, it's plenty of clashing and but they're good, they're good people. Yeah, yeah. I can't help but comment that it's not that it's a big deal or anything, but both of you would have a good few tattoos. Um, yeah, we're both uh, coloured yeah, individuals, yeah. yeah. It's it's a, it's good though. You um you say before, Mickey, that a lot of yours have meaning. I suppose the most one that the, the one that stands out there is the butterfly on your hand. Um do, do, do you, you you like them anyway? Yeah, I do. I do like them. Um, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm covered pretty much. I have my from my shoulder the whole way down an arm, my fingers and my hand and me my leg, my right leg. So yeah, I'm I, I like them. I'm passionate about them. I'm interested in them. Um, again, I don't rub people up them I don't have them in like if again I don't mind like similar to yourself I, I, I'm not too fussed if people don't like them yeah. my father or mother probably hate them at the start but <laughs> they, 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 they they get used to them so uh, yeah um, I would have been very interested in the Maori and the New Zealanders again reading up about them and the whole thing that their arms are stories of their life so I, 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 have, I have different things in it and um, my sister actually has two kids with a Maori as well. So uh, that 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 kind of just I don't know drove it on even more that I'm going to get more tattoos and, and get the different bits and bobs on me. So you like your tat? Do you like your? Have you any uh, both years of tats or just? Oh, just I, know, uh, I got enough for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a few. Yeah, you've the two. You 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 you've the, you've the two arms done. I have the two arms and I've I mean chest. I've these ribs. I've these ribs. I've. This thigh, I've that foot. I tattooed myself on that ankle. Um, Did you? Good man. I, I wanted I wanted to tattoo myself as well for the crack. The tattoo artist went out for a fag, so I used the gun while he went out to see if I could do it. <laughs> it's fucking hard and it looks, it shakes fairly fast. And what did you draw it's, your... Oh, I done a little smiley face. You wouldn't be able to see it now because it's so faded. Oh, it's faint, it's all just, right, yeah. It was, uh, right, a purple, right, right, purple right. shade up there. I just drew a little fucking smiley face myself. But uh, okay. have you ever got any sort of stick or abuse for the tattoos? Or would you have had them sort of say a good few years ago before they were, were even less common? Like, yeah, 2012, I'd say I got my, my first one, so or 2011, maybe with 10 years now. Um, yeah, I would have got a bit of abuse here and there, not that much though, not that much. Um, a little bit maybe in club games, um, but 
chase like it wouldn't bother me at all like you know mm. um, uh, mainly more so for me relations like my old aunties would have been giving out to me saying why are you getting your fingers tattooed and stuff like that but no it doesn't really bother me I don't, I don't really listen to them like you know yeah, so yeah. I, I like them and, and I'm going to fill up my hand even a bit more and still have a few more in the pipeline that I have I, ideas for so um, I'd probably I'd probably do my right side like I, I'd probably do half of my body I don't know if I get any in the left if I if I get married I might get my wedding finger done that's what I was thinking going mm-hmm. on my left that'd be a good one yeah that's cool that, right? so um yeah, 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 that's the cow hole of the bag, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know you're getting you, you know you're getting serious if you if you have to do that. So yeah, uh, that's down the line. That's down the line. But uh, you've got the dog recently, and you've got the you've got the when you get the roofing for the dog run, that's that's it. Then you know that's, that's I'm, o- I'm under pressure then, boys. I'm under pressure then. <laughs> we just we'll end the show then, Mickey. Just a few short uh, random Come on, boys. Uh, if you could choose to mark one footballer from any time period for one match, who would it be? Wow, God. Um, any footballer from any time. Jesus, Jesus. Kieran McDonald, maybe. Mayo again. Oh, yeah. Kieran McDonald, Mayo. If I was a forward, Kieran McGeaney. Mm. I used to love McGeaney. If I was a forward, um, yeah. I think I think that maybe them them two boys would be good. Kieran McDonald was something else. Yeah, yeah, he would be be drink one of Mark now. <laughs> off the left. Uh number two, Mickey, Father Ted or killing a scully. Father Ted. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. you're All right. Yeah. Uh, is it three, Jenna? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Who, in your opinion, is the greatest manager of all time across all sports? Oh. Spanish of all time across all sports. One man is coming into my head here now. I can't get him over. Fergie. Fergie. Alex Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is there anyone else? It's always when I go back and I think of these later on, having the thinking about the chat we had, <laughs> someone has come into my head. But, but yeah, Boylan is right up there with Mead, being a Mead man as well. He's right up there for all Ireland's. Um, brought Mead, hadn't won in all Ireland in 20 years and he, he gave us four. Um, Got the five All Ireland finals, but Fergie probably where he brought United and you know the, yeah. just the amount of one and just that relentless drive. Cody as well, but I uh, look at I'll, I'll stick with Fergie. Yeah, I think yeah. that's fair enough. There's no replacement for him. Mm. Uh, number four, <laughs> would you rather swim through your town sewage system once <laughs> or find out that your girlfriend secretly does it every day for fun? Uh, Secretly does it, as in she's getting she's getting it off someone else. No, no, no she swims through the, the town sewage system for fun. That's a secret, or you have to do it once. Um, oh fuck's sake, lads! I don't. Uh... <laughs> you don't have to pass. I think no, I'll pass. I'll pass that. I'll pass that. I'll pass that. <laughs> I don't I'd swim through it if there was if there was money. I'd swim through it. <laughs> We could hold you to it. I started going for me. Uh, if the world was 24 hours and you were the only one who knew, how would you spend those 24 hours? God. Um, just spend them with family and friends. Um, mm. I don't know about jumping onto a plane. Sure, if I jumped onto a plane and went to South Africa, it'd be five or six hours gone there. <laughs> uh, Time's on. Yeah, just, just have, have, a, have a nice, nice, nice meal and Drinks with me family and friends, I'd say. That's nice. What do you what do you do, Michael? Yeah, probably go to places. I I go to places of my locality. I said this <laughs> last time saying farewell to the local beach and that type of thing. <laughs> local yeah, local. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the local uh, one. Uh, what's your favorite food to order from a deli? Oh yeah. Cheers, boys. I don't order from a deli too much. Um <laughs> give me give me a salad roll there, maybe a brown salad roll with uh no butter, no mayonnaise, plenty of meat. Um, salad yeah uh, that's it I wouldn't have had too off now with that um, geez, I used to love a breakfast roll back in the day though by God when I was young lad <laughs> fuel and, uh, yeah big time pudding and black, black pudding has to be black pudding in it, mother of God uh, you can be any nationality other than your current one for a day which do you choose oh Italian or New Zealand that's an easy one I, 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 two of them I, I, oh yeah I'd be an Italian uh, cool as a cucumber, drinking coffee all day, every day. 
yeah. um, in the mafia, or I'd be a New Zealander. Yeah, fair enough. That's fair enough. Jamaican. Jamaica. Yeah. My God. Why yeah. Get back for a day. Just see how it goes, you know. <laughs> see how it goes. What about yourself, man? I'd be a Maori as well, I'd say. Oh, just yeah. for the sheer size yeah. of him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can you have an organized wrestling match against any one animal. What animal do you wrestle? <laughs> Where are these questions coming up? <laughs> um any animal. Python or, or maybe a, a gorilla. Or just take take down the big dog, you know what I mean? Go for go for the big dog. What's the no point in wrestling with a, a giraffe or something? Uh a gorilla maybe or, or a snake or something, the big python, something yeah. like that. Tricky one. Take okay. him down, take him down and be the daddy. <laughs> take a wolf or something or a wolf, a, yeah. Bear or something. Right. I, I, I like a hy- I like a hyena as well. I like a hyena. Yeah. Um, hmm. Something about them. They're dirt, they're dirty and they're nasty. They're, um, they're the cornerbacks in the animal world. <laughs> they're which? They're the cornerbacks in the animal world. Yeah, they are. They're they're, they're dirty yokes. They're tough. Yeah. I'd say crocodile. I'd say. Oh, Steve Irwin. Oh yeah. Good, yeah. One. Good one. Good one. Good one. Um, what person, living or dead, would you like to have a foot race against? Um, foot race against hmm. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it weird. He didn't really look after himself. You're getting hanging this quiz now. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Is there meant to be a sport? Or are they meant to be all sporty? I don't no, know. No, no, no. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. imagination is the key here. I think with Mark's question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who would you race against? Bill Clinton, I'd say. Oh, that's a good one. If they Who? Here, I mean. Bill Clinton. All right, yeah. Or Hillary. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mickey, where can I find roofing for a dog shed? <laughs> Roger Bridge, County Westmead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> Mickey, it's been a pleasure. We conclude our podcast with it's been funny you mentioned Liam Dunn. Uh, I crossed oh, the line. Jesus. Yeah. We pick a random line from his book at the end. So uh, you have number page number one to 286. Uh, and we read a paragraph from it. Uh, so give us a number between one and 286. Oh, God, I hope he talks about a few bottles of Heineken in the fridge here. Um, <laughs> uh, 113. 113. So... Over 16,000 turned up to watch the game and Liam Doyle, who by now could hardly move, came over to mark me and chatted away. Whenever the sitter was down the far end of the field about the countless early morning training sessions they had put in, by the end of the match, I was under no illusions about Sherlock Land's success. Their All-Ireland was far from a fluke. Ooh. Every Brilliant. line is a classic. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's a great book. Jeez, I haven't, I haven't, I don't know where it is. It's knocking around somewhere, but I remember, I remember loving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when he came back and got harder the year and the way he was training on his own again, it was class. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, top man. Well, Mickey, look forward to seeing your book on the shelves because it is going to be a bestseller. I tell you that much for sure. It's been great. I don't know about that, but this. Yeah, that boys, thank, thank some, thanks a million for asking me. Oh, Cheers, Mickey. You. You're a legend. Talk thank to you, you soon. I hope. I hope you enjoyed it, boys. Thanks a million. Cheers, Cheers. mate. Good luck. Look after yourself. Yeah, talk soon, lads.